Have you been looking for a brand new construction home in an area where there's no HOA, no CDD, four bedrooms, two bath, two car garage on a quarter acre lot, all appliances included for $319,000? Well then look no further because I got you. What's up YouTube fam? If you're new to my channel, well let me introduce myself. My name is Alexis Diaz and I'm Central Florida's real estate advisor and co-founder of the Evolved Estates Group. Our passion is helping people evolve in real estate so we go all over Central Florida and surrounding areas to show you what Florida has to offer. We explore new construction, resale homes, investment opportunities, local restaurant shops, and so much more so make sure you like comment subscribe turn on those notifications so you don't miss my weekly videos Today we are back in Ocala, Florida, specifically Marion Oaks, one of my favorite places to tour new construction because there's an abundance of houses within everyone's price point. Now today we're going to tour this four bedroom, two bath, two car garage, 1,726 square foot on a quarter acre lot. This area has no HOA, no CDDs. All of the appliances are included especially the wash and dryer, which I'm super excited about. This house is listed at $319,000. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video where we're gonna go to Monarch School of Real Estate and I'm gonna show you what the down payment, closing costs, taxes, and so much more. Now let's begin your real estate evolution tour. All right, you guys know how I get. I get super excited because I'm constantly trying to show the houses that I think that you would like to see, right? And has the most bang for its buck. So I want you to notice that in front of the house, we have mature landscaping and I also did see some sprinkler heads as well. So that means that there's an irrigation system, which I can definitely appreciate. So as you're walking in, one of the most sought out features right now is not walking directly into the house and you can see what's happening in the kitchen right so when you walk in you do have this hallway so it's a little foyer so you can have maybe like a, a table here a drop-off zone whatever you would like but i like i definitely like that so we have bedroom number one which is going to be in front of the house to my left but in before I show you that, I'm getting super excited. Before I show you that, let me show you that you have a closet here. So this was basically known as a coat closet, but again, it doesn't get cold in here. It's actually getting very, very warm in Florida already. So you can put your sweaters or whatever you want, storage and all that good stuff, but you have that if in case you need it, okay? So now we're gonna check out bedroom number one, which faces the front of the house. Okay, so we're walking into bedroom number one. They all have lights. They are pre-wired for a ceiling fan. They do not come with a ceiling fan, but that just gives you the opportunity to pick and choose whichever one you want. We have two windows in here. A lot of natural light is coming out and it's gloomy today in Ocala, but still we have that light. We could technically turn off the light. Now there is carpet all over, um, not all over, but in each of the bedrooms, there's carpet. And then throughout the house, you have this, um, it's called Rev, it's called Mohawk Rev Wood uh, Scratch Resistant and Water Resistant Flooring, okay? So I wanna show you the closet in this room, which is very, very different. They have five racks in here. So I'm not sure why they didn't make this your regular, you know, with the pole. Um, so if you wanted to, you can maybe keep some of the racks um, on the top and then put a pole there so that you can hang up some stuff um, and then maybe fold your jeans and your pants 
or what this could be like let's say you needed a three bedroom and an office maybe this could serve as your office and that's some storage space what i want you to take um notice of too is that in this room we also have a chase so a chase is this exactly where you could put the tv you could plug it in and you don't have to have any wires hanging down which is definitely a great look so this is bedroom number one and let's continue with the tour all right, so now we're coming into the main living space. This is considered an open floor plan. This would be considered your family room. Now, this is definitely a great size. It's very nice and open. What I would say is that the TV would go on this wall. You guys already know, 100 inch minimum. So if your TV goes on this wall, you already have a chase in here as well. So I love that the builder thought about that. What I also want you to take notice too, is that the baseboards are not your, your average um, minimum baseboards. They did extend it, which is very, it just looks, it looks better. I like, I like when they extend, they have the extended baseboards. Now, so this is gonna be the family room. You have the recessed lighting again there's no ceiling fans in here but all of the rooms are pre-wired for a ceiling fan okay now we do have sliding doors here and so what i love about this is that oh there's a lot hold on there we go all right so we do have sliding doors and i want you to see you could leave this open on the cooler days and it has a screen right so if you want to get that breeze but you don't want the bugs because it's florida then this is perfect it already comes with that so this is an extended covered lanai and um it does have like i said everything is pre-wired for a ceiling fan but let's go check out the backyard and see what what is possible with this space all right, so this is your backyard oasis. As I mentioned, you have an extended lanai, which I definitely could appreciate. You can make this, you can have an outdoor um, kitchen space. You can enclose this. You can maybe have a domino table. You can extend this with pavers or concrete if you would like. You can add a pool, a trampoline, a playground, whatever your heart desires. This, there is no HOA. However, it is still deed restrictions deed restricted and so that means there are still regulations so for example you can't have 50 foot um, fences right you could have wood vinyl um, chain link but it, it has to be at only six feet right or low or lower so again this is your backyard oasis it's on a quarter acre you can fence this out do whatever you would love to do one thing i always tell my clients is if you want to know if you want to end up building a pool maybe in the future right you always want to know especially if the house is on a septic tank where is that septic tank because if that septic tank is in the back then you're not going to be able to add a pool okay so the septic tank is in the front of the house which works in your favor okay so this is your backyard let me know what some things you would do you can add a perugula and a fire pit and all of that stuff just make this your backyard oasis but let's continue the tour because we got so much to show you now what did you think about that backyard do you like the lot is it big enough for you one thing to keep in mind is that there are a lot of houses here, specifically in the Marion Oaks area, where you can find the house on a half an acre, a little bit more, or even an acre, but those are a little bit far and few in between the acre ones. But there's areas within the Ocala area where you can definitely find the house within the 350s on at least an acre lot. What I wanted to say is that if you would like to work with us, the best way to reach out to us is in my YouTube. I have a Calendly link and you just choose whether you're a builder wanting to connect with me, a buyer, a seller, an investor, because I don't only help buyers, I also help sellers sell their home and evolve in real estate, whether they're gonna stay in Florida or move out of the state. So that's gonna be the best way to reach out to me to get my undivided attention. If you decide to call me, you could go ahead, call me, you'll get my assistant and then she'll schedule time on my calendar as well. This is the the best way because when you call me and I want to make sure that I have 
that you have my undivided attention, okay? So now that we got that out of the way, let's come this way. So we do have a, a separate dining space here. Um, we have two windows in here, so it's definitely bringing in a lot of light. We have some out, we actually have three outlets in here. What I was telling my husband, I was like, yeah, this space is kind of like a little snug, but what you could do is that you could essentially maybe do a custom bench to fit your, um, to fit the space and to fit your family needs, or maybe like a rectangle table or even a square table because they have some square tables where you can fit like eight people on there. So this is the dining space and dining space, eating kitchen, whatever, those words are definitely interchangeable. So let's come into this kitchen. One of my favorite features of a home. I definitely like this kitchen. You guys know that I love islands because I'm an island girl. I'm from Puerto Rico. I'm also from Dominican Republic and I was born and raised in Staten Island, New York. So when I see islands, it just reminds me of being back home. My kids surrounding the island, we're chopping it up, talking about our day. So I know you guys are some, I, a lot of people reach out to me like I'm from the islands too. And I absolutely love that. So this is the island. We have quartz countertops. It's not as big as some of the islands that I've shown in other houses, but it's definitely a nice size. We do have the sink in the island. I know people are in between. Some people like the sink in the island and some people don't like the sink in the island. Me personally, I don't really um, care for the sink in the island because it just takes away from the space, but it is what it is. This is a great house. So we have a single stainless steel sink. We have one of the, my favorite features is the pull out faucet. Not my favorite, not my favorite looking faucet, but it's okay. Um, we also have a garbage disposal. So as I mentioned, we have all of the appliances that are coming with this house and all of the appliances are Samsung. So we have the dishwasher, we have the microwave over the electric stove, and then we also have the double door refrigerator, okay? So we have here, we have 42 inch cabinets, yes. 42 inch cabinets, they are all soft closed. We have the crown molding on the top. You have drawers galore, oh my gosh. These are my favorite type of drawers, these pull out drawers where you can put all of your, um, your pans and your pots and things like that. I absolutely love this. So we also have subway tile backsplash in here as well, which I could appreciate because it's so much easier. Like let's say you're making spaghetti or my kids love to help cook and you know kids are messy and even adults are messy too and you're splashing and you have tomato sauce all over here it's super quick to just wipe it as opposed to it being just the paint so I definitely appreciate that so you have the same drawers and cabinets on that side over here so again you have more than enough space now to my left we also have another counter space you already know what this is gonna be it is gonna be our coffee station absolutely I'm a coffee fanatic i love me some good coffee so this is a perfect if you are like me and you love coffee and you have to have a coffee station this is a perfect perfect station for it you have a cabinet on the top as well where you can go ahead me personally i love starbucks cups so um i I collect them, um, but I know that Stan, a lot of people like Stanley uh, cups as well. So I wanna show you the refrigerator cause you guys always know that I absolutely love to open everything up and show you how everything looks. So this is the refrigerator. I would hope a refrigerator um, is not a deal breaker, but you know. It definitely has enough space. What I always say, like, let's say you're like, oh, I want a better refrigerator. You could always just put this in the garage and then buy a new one, up to you. So come on this way. So over here, we actually have a walk-in pantry and we have a laundry room. So to my left, we're gonna have the walk-in pantry. You have an abundance of storage space in here for all your box goods, canned goods, kids snacks, water, soda, juices, whatever your family eats you have more than enough space in there. So over here off of the garage, we also have the laundry space. I am here for this laundry space. I love it. There's more than enough space. It feels very open. You have Samsung washer and dryer. You even have a utility sink, which I love, love, love. So they have a shelf up here and like I always say, after you close, if you don't want that, take it out, put cabinets and then you can like, 
put all of your detergent needs and close it up and that's it. So this is the laundry space. You even have an outlet right there. So maybe you wanted to, um, I don't know. I don't know what you need the outlet for whatever you need it for, there's an outlet there, okay? So now to my left, we're gonna have the two car garage and let's go see how big it is. All right, so here is your two car garage. Your garage door opener already comes with the house. One less thing to worry about. I really feel like this garage is a little bit bigger than your average two car garage. There's definitely a lot of space. So you have your HVAC system in here, which I do have a lot of clients reach out and they like the HVAC system in the um, garage. And then you also have your water heater in the garage as well. To be quite honest with you, I have never seen the, the black top over is and I'm just it says for smart grid or home automation so it says hybrid and I'm not really you know what this is babe nope my husband doesn't know what this is either and you know I'm not that type of realtor who I'm gonna be like oh I know everything because honestly I, I don't know what this is I know how to negotiate but I don't know what this is so we find out together it's not this little I'll be I'll be scared of somebody who says, who thinks they know it all. If you know, you know. So this guys, I really do not know what, why it's, I don't know. But hey, if it's hybrid electric, maybe you're saving some water. We're not mad at saving some money, okay? But if you want to know what that is, I could definitely reach out to the builder and see what it is. Reach out to me. I'll have that answer for you if that's what you would love to know. Now we are not done with this tour. Let's Let's go. Okay, so this house is considered a split floor plan where the master bedroom is on one side, the other bedrooms are on the opposite side, okay? So I always leave the master bedroom for last. We already checked out bedroom number one. Now, on the same side of the house, we're gonna have bedroom number two, number three, and then the bathroom that they share. And I could definitely appreciate that they have a long hallway. So it has some kind of like some privacy between the bedrooms. Let's go. All right, so let's call this bedroom number two. It faces the front of the house as well. Definitely a great size. And we also have these bifold doors where you have a very very spacious closet this is very 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 spacious and is deep you can actually walk into it okay so what I always tell everyone is that if you need more space let's say you have multiple kids you need to um, bunk the kids so there's two kids in one room you could always just add another one of these here one child has one rack and the other child has another rack that's what we do my husband and I have six kids together um we had three biological sons and then we were foster parents so we had decided to adopt a sibling group of three so we have four boys and two girls and so some of the kids are bunked in the rooms so that's what we do we just add another shelf so that they have their own um their own space so this is the bedroom number two again all of the bedrooms has carpet this one has the one um window we have the recessed lighting this room so i'm I'm thinking all of the rooms are gonna have this chase right here, which I love. You could have the TV right there, and then you don't have any wires hanging out. So now we have the, the next room next to here is gonna be the linen closet and then the bathroom, which I really like. All right, I really like that these bedrooms are a decent size. The front bedroom is, looks a little bit smaller but the this one that we just saw and then the next one that we're gonna see is definitely a decent size so you have a linen closet which has five shelves great space to put all of your bed sheets towels and whatever you need um so then we have the bathroom number two right so this bathroom is where everyone else is gonna share we have two sinks which i love we have the quartz countertops the, the double cabinets and then we also have the shower tub combination i absolutely love that there is a um, window in the shower this tiling goes all the way up to the ceiling and then you have that nice decorative decorative i can never say that decorative decorative tiling in between the big tiling so i i love how that looks okay so that is 
bathroom number two and then now we're going to be walking into bedroom number three so bedroom number three faces the back of the house and this is going to be the largest bedrooms beside the um besides the master uh bedroom because this is definitely a nice size so you have two windows in here you have your chase here as well so you could put your bed on one side and then put the tv here this is very, very nice size. So what happens sometimes is that a lot of the builders like to compact the as many rooms in a house under a square footage and the rooms are tiny. But for this house, I do feel that the, the bedrooms are a nice size. So here we have the double closet as well. This is a little bit off color, so um, I'm sure that they will paint it because it's definitely not white. So you have I think this is the biggest closet. You, It's literally this, that wide. Um, again, if you need to bunk the kids, customize your closet. I actually have one client who she says every house that they have bought, they, um, they customize their closets for their daughters. So I thought that that was pretty neat. So this is bedroom number three. And then now we're gonna go back to the other side of the house where the master bedroom is off of the kitchen. All right, so now we're gonna be walking into the master bedroom. So the master bedroom, for the most part, in most houses faces the back of the house here in Ocala. So this master bedroom faces the back of the house. We have the tray ceilings, which I love. And then we have the um, two windows. So uh, again, a lot of natural light comes in through here. It is a little bit gloomy today. On this wall, you have the chase in here. So as we saw, the chases are in all of the bedrooms, including the family room as well. So you can definitely have your bed on one, on the opposite side of the wall, and then go ahead and have your TV there. So that while well, you could just be resting, watching TV. So that's awesome, okay? Now, we are going to now tour the master bathroom. All right, so this is your master bathroom and I absolutely love it. So right here we have the linen closet, which you have five shelves, enough space for all of your towels and maybe some extra things that you, you have, right? To my left, we have a walk-in closet with more than enough shelf space. I am here for it. I love where there's enough space and then you can end up making your it your own. So you can go to Ikea, get some customizable inserts. My in-laws actually went to Ikea. They got a whole bunch of customizable inserts and they said that it was actually super easy to install. Cause you know Ikea, they be having like 50 million different parts and double the screws and it's super overwhelming but no they said it's super simple or you can go on pinterest and and youtube and all that stuff or hire a company to do it okay now in this master bathroom it is my favorite it has the double sinks but you have enough space in between the double sinks to add like maybe have your perfume there and things like that you also have an outlet here and on the wall and you guys know that i love this when when there's drawers in between the cabinet so this this one it actually has drawers on each side and then in the middle so you have more than enough space in here to put all of your good stuff me i'm a dyson fanatic so i would have dyson i have the i don't know i have so many dyson products i really do love it so come on this way we actually have a separate water closet if you didn't know what a water closet is it's just basically where the toilet is and it's in a closet it's called the water closet all right, now we have a window here. I have a lot of people call me. They're like, I absolutely need to have a window in the bathroom. So here you go. This is definitely for you. You have a towel rack here as well. I'm not a big fan of that. That's super freaking ugly and it looks cheap. So they need to like do something with that because this is a beautiful house and this towel rack is just not cutting it. But what I will say though, is that in my house, we actually have, and we bought it from Ikea. It's like a um, kind of like a, 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 a pole here and they come out and you can actually, you can extend it and stuff and put your towel on it. I think it looks so good and the towel actually dries. So now we have a step-in shower because you actually have to step in, right? If it was a walk-in, you don't have to step in, but this is a step-in shower. You have this beautiful hexagon tiling on the floor and then you also have the tiling going all the way up to the ceiling, which I love when builders do that. It doesn't take much to 
put all the top put the tiling all the way up to the ceiling because what happens is is if you're cleaning and there's no tile on the top and it constantly gets wet then the paint starts to peel okay so that's not gonna happen here because you have tiling all the way up and then you do have a niche I love niches it just gives you added storage to put your shampoos your um, your soap or anything and then on the inside of the niche you have that hexagon tiling that's on the floor which is very very nice you also have this great tiling um, in the the bathroom so if it gets wet that is perfectly fine now we're almost at the end of the tour let's go meet back in the kitchen chop it up and we're gonna go to monarch school of real estate all right so we are back in the kitchen you guys know it's my absolute favorite place to be what do you think about this house do you love it so let's go over some details again so this is a four bedroom two bath two car garage 1726 square foot home on a quarter acre lot we have the um mohawk revwood planking flooring throughout the house except the bedrooms we have the open floor concept we have this beautiful kitchen with the island quartz countertops we have the 42 inch cabinets soft clothes we have the crown molding on the top all samsung appliances the microwave over the electric stove the dishwasher as well as the double um the double door fridge we have this the subway towel backsplash in the kitchen which is definitely very convenient we also have the laundry room off of the kitchen where you're going to already have the washer and dryer as well as the utility sink we have that walk-in pantry where you have an abundance of space to house all of your food goods we have the two-car garage where you already have the um, garage door opener now let's talk about the bedrooms we have bedroom number one which faces the front of the house and then we also have that hallway which leads to bedroom number two and then we have the full bathroom that they share and then bedroom number three which faces the back of the house we can't forget about the um the dining space off of the kitchen next to the master bedroom let's talk about that master bedroom with the tray ceilings the two windows and then that master bathroom Bathroom where you have the double um, sink vanity you have all the drawer space you have that window and then you also have that step-in shower with the tiling going all the way up to the top and then you have that master closet where you have an abundance of space and you can make it your own last but not least you have the extended covered lanai where you can make that your backyard oasis you can enclose that have an outdoor kitchen and all of that good stuff add a pool back there so this this house is built with concrete block. It is on a septic tank and uh, I was gonna say pool water <laughs> and public water, okay? So septic tank, public water. We are in Ocala, Florida, specifically Marion Oak. So Ocala is still considered Central Florida and it's North of Orlando. So we're about an hour and 15 minutes away from downtown Orlando. So very quick drive. You could go to the new Kia Center, which was formerly known as the Amway Center. You, there's some good, if you like that nightlife, there's bars, restaurants, tons of things to do. You're about an hour and a half away from Walt Disney World. Take your family to go see Mickey Mouse you're about an hour and a half away from Tampa as well which is gonna lead you to some really good restaurants shopping and even the beaches you're about 45 minutes away from Gainesville okay so specifically in Marion Oaks, we have what's called, and it's not what's called, it's what I call it, the Marion Hub, where you have five minutes away from here, you have Winn-Dixie, which they should be turning in it into an Aldi's because Aldi's bought out Winn-Dixie, just in case you did not know that. They also have a barbershop. They have a Dominican hair salon. You guys know Dominican hair salons, they do the best, best blowouts. Um, you have a pizzeria. You also have a restaurant called Old San Juan Restaurant, which the food is very, very good. They also have a bakery adjacent to the um the restaurant it's in it's in the same space and they have like bread pudding
pudding, quesitos, flan, so, so, so good. You also have like an urgent care within the Marion Oaks area. You have your own um, sheriff's department, your own fire department. You also have a community center where you can um, have a membership to it, very, very low, but you have basketball courts, you have tennis courts, you have a splash pad for the kids, you have a library inside there, you have a fitness center in there as well. So there's tons to do within the area. Of course, you have your Walgreens, you have Domino's, you have um, an abundance of different like shops. So we are literally about 10 to 15 minutes away from Highway 200, where now you're, we're talking about all of the shops. We have Dillard's, Dick's Sporting Goods, Ulta. We have um, Epic Movie Theaters. We have the VA Clinic. Thank you for everyone who has served our country. We have my favorite Starbucks. We have different eatery there, shopping. Um, you have two major hospitals there as well. So everything is within um, a close uh, proximity. Also, to get here, you have to take I-75. When you get off I-75, you're gonna go on a road called 484. Now that's where you're gonna have, you have a pilot on the corner, you have McDonald's, you have Burger King, on the opposite side, you have Taco Bell, Dunkin' Donuts. But they're actually building a Wawa, which I am so excited. I absolutely love Wawa. They have some really good food there. So that's very convenient. On that same block, you're gonna have an area where they have an abundance of different ethnicity food trucks. So you that are you come on the weekend and that place is packed with some really with a whole bunch of people and some really, really good food. So there's a lot to do within the Ocala area. If you didn't know, Ocala is known as the horse capital of the world. So we have the equestrian center, which is about 25 minutes away from here. They have a luxury hotel, restaurants in Inside the hotel if you get a chance to go check out a horse competition so please do so it is so much fun I love driving through Ocala because you get to see all of the horse farms the beautiful horses um, there are areas that are still a little bit more rural but this area in particular uh, Marion Oaks is definitely not as rural okay now you also have the spring so you have 30 minutes away from here you have rainbow springs which you can go kayaking canoeing they have wild monkeys they have manatees in the water they have gators of course and then you also have rainbow springs where that water is absolutely beautiful you can go um you can camp there you have um zip lining canoeing kayaking swimming and all of that stuff so there's definitely things to do in um in the area and downtown ocala is the place to be it's about 20 minutes from here as well and i absolutely love downtown ocala because they have my favorite candy shop grandpa joe's candy shop you go in there there's an abundance of different candies they also have like a candy buffet where you take this box you add in all the candy you don't even have to close it for five dollars my kids absolutely love it so that's a little bit about ocala walmart is about 10 minutes away from here as well so you are not in the boonies okay this house is listed at three hundred and nineteen thousand dollars and what I want to do next is I want to go ahead and go to Monarch School of Real Estate because you guys know that I love to educate you as consumers and so that you be, you can become savvy consumers whether you use me as your real estate advisor or not. And to my next point, I do not only cover Ocala. I'm here a lot because of what Ocala offers, but I cover all of Central Florida from Ocala all the way down to Tampa and everything in between. So don't forget that. Don't tell me I didn't know you don't only I didn't know you handle Kissimmee why didn't know you handle Claremont I handle all of it everywhere in between all right so if you want to work with us just reach out to us and we'll definitely love to help you evolve in real estate but without further ado let's go to Monarch School of Real Estate all right so welcome to Monarch School of Real Estate yes I love it I love doing this Huge disclaimer, I am not a licensed mortgage lender. I am not a tax appraiser. This is solely estimate, guys, okay? So don't, you can't hold me to these numbers because these are just estimates, all right? I just wanna make sure that I'm super clear on that. So this house is listed at $319,000, right? So 
Just because it's listed at 319,000 doesn't necessarily mean you need to pay 319,000. But if you need closing costs and you, there's a there's a lot of different ways to um, and tactics to uh, negotiate. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Now remember, there's no HOA or no CDD, which basically means is that you don't have an added expense when it comes to that. A lot of people ask me, I see a whole bunch of people saying there's no CDD. What does that mean? So CDD is basically a community um, district development fee and what happens is is that sometimes builders take out a bond um, for the infrastructure of the community when if when they're first building right and so they put that bond it's usually a 30-year bond onto the homeowners so that gets rolled in to the homeowners taxes right and so sometimes it may make sense right if the sometimes the, if there's an HOA uh, if there's a CDD the HOA is like $150 per year Year, right um, and there's maybe an abundance of amenities so it just may make sense it just depends on what your situation is right and so um, my job here is to absolutely get you the best price with the absolute best protection okay that's my job now we're gonna talk about a few different loans so the first one is FHA so FHA is primarily for first-time home buyers the minimum down payment requirement is 3.5 percent of the purchase price okay so we're gonna do everything based on what is listed at, at three 19. So FHA, 3.5% of $319,000 gives us $11,165, right? When you're buying a house, not only do you have to think about a down payment, you also have to think about closing costs. What are closing costs, Alexis? Well, closing costs on accumulation of fees such as loan origination fees, title fees, prorated taxes, doc stamps, prorated insurance, and etc. It's usually about three to four percent of the purchase price, but I'm always super conservative and I love to go higher, so I go four percent. So four percent of the purchase price is twelve thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars. So if we add the two, we have a cash to close of twenty three thousand nine hundred and twenty five dollars. A cash to close means that that's how much cash you need in order to close on the house and get the keys, right? And evolve in real estate. So that's FHA. The next one we're going to talk about is conventional. Conventional you may qualify as a first time home buyer for 3% down. So 3% of the purchase price is $9,570. The closing costs are gonna stay the same. So we're gonna have a cash to close of $22,330. So the next tier from 3% is actually 5%. 5% of the purchase price is $15,950. Same closing cost, we have a cash to close of $28,710. Now the next tier from 5% is 10%. Now Alexis, why would I pay 10%? The reason why you're gonna pay 10% if this is gonna be considered a second home. Let's say you're gonna eventually um, move here, you're gonna retire in a few years, but you wanna buy now, it's gonna be considered a second home. Let's say you're still renting wherever you live, let's say New York. Um, and you wanna buy a house here, but you're not gonna move just yet, that's still gonna be considered a second home even though you don't own a home in New York, all right? So 10% of the purchase price is $31,900. Same closing cost, gives us a cash to close of $44,660. Now the next tier from 10% is 20%. Now why would you pay 20%? The reason why you're gonna pay 20% is one, if you're gonna use this as an investment property, you could use this as a short-term um, investment property or a long-term, and minimum down payment is gonna be 20%. Or if you wanna avoid private mortgage insurance, then you're gonna to wanna to put 20%. Let's say you sold your house, you got a lot of, um, you, 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 went, you did good, um, you just rolled that in and you avoid private mortgage insurance. So 20% of the purchase price is $63,800. Same closing cost, we have a cash to close of $76,560. Now we also have a few other different loans. We have USDA. USDA loan is 100% financing and it's um, for areas that are considered rural. Um, so all you have to think about is the closing cost, which right here, it's $12,760. Now the next one is VA. Thank you for everyone who has served our country. Um, you have 100% financing and all you have to worry about is the closing cost, which is the $12,760. Now with cash, there is still closing costs. It's just not as much. 
I estimate it to be around two to 3,000 and that may just still be on the high side. Now for taxes, taxes are always a very um, a, a popular subject. So taxes, when you're buying a new construction house, the taxes on for the first year is gonna be extremely low because it's only based on the land value. But the second year, the land gets reassessed with the house and your taxes are gonna go up, okay? So this is just an estimate because like I said, I'm not a tax appraiser, but this is a formula that I use. So essentially, they will the tax appraiser will take 80% of the purchase price. So I the 80% of $319,000, I got $255,200. Now you take that and you deduct $50,000 if this is gonna be used as your primary residence because here in the state of Florida, you can file for what is called the Florida Homestead Tax Exemption, which is that $50,000 discount. And you'll see that, you'll see a, um, a, a difference in your payments, right? So if we do that, we get $205,200. And then now we have to take that amount and times it by the millage rate. So this is only the millage rate for Marion Oaks specific. Every other community is gonna have their own millage rate, okay? So for Marion Oaks, the millage rate is 0 0.0168. So I times that by $205,200, and we have an estimate of taxes per year of $3,447.36. Now, if you're gonna use this as a second home, if you're gonna use this as an investment, it's gonna be a little bit higher because you can't do that $50,000 um, deduction okay now the next topic that is very very popular is homeowners insurance so yes home um, a lot of insurance companies have uh, no longer write policies here in Florida but there's still a lot more here they are writing policies and where we are located in Ocala is very inland so the likelihood of a catastrophic hurricane coming here and destroying everything is very unlikely not to say that it's not possible but it's unlikely um, so the and it being new construction home, I estimate the um, homeowner's insurance to be 1200 or less per year, okay? So this is the number breakdown. And then I have a lot of people asking me, what is the estimated monthly mortgage? Guys, it varies for everyone. Everyone's file is different. There's so many different variations because credit, that's the income ratio, the income, your credit file, it, it's, a, it's a lot, right? So guys, this is gonna be an estimate. Please do not tell the loan officer. Well, Alexis said that my mortgage was gonna be this. Guys, this is just an estimate and disclaimer to the world that I am not a mortgage, I'm not a licensed mortgage lender, okay? This is just an estimate. All right, so estimated mortgage. Now, this is based on a 6.5 interest rate, okay? It's based on a 6.5 interest rate. It's based on $3,800 of taxes per year because I went up just to give you cushion, right? This is based on 6.5% interest rate. Everybody's interest rate is gonna be different, all right? The interest rates fluctuate, they're higher, they're lower. So I'm just letting you guys know, all right? So for FHA, the estimated mortgage based on a 3.5% down payment, 6.5% interest rate, it's estimated to be around $2,625 per month. Remember, estimates. Now, conventional, if you have, if you put down 3%, estimate, of course, is $2,636. Again, this, guys, is just an estimate. This is an estimate. 5% is... Um, $2,537 per month, 10%, $2,372 per month, and 20%, $2,038 per month. This is, and I'm just gonna write it, guys. This is just an estimate. I cannot stress this enough. It is going to be different for everyone, but I know a lot of people reach out to me and they're like, I just want an estimate. I just kinda wanna know. It's really gonna be, Oh, everybody's gonna be all over the place. So I really don't like to do this, but I'm doing it for you guys because I've heard a lot of people asking me to do this. And again, it's based off a six and a half in percent interest rate. The Fed say that the interest rates are supposed to be um, decreased up to four times this year. Um, so again, I, you guys may not know, but once interest rates go down, prices of the house go up, which makes it 
a multiple offer situation and um, very, very hard to get really good like negotiations as far as like closing costs, right? So I always say in a market there were in this, and this is this is not bad. When in the in the 80s and the 90s, the interest rates for homes were like 13 to 19 percent, right? So what I would say though is that if it oh if it makes sense for you and your family monthly don't harp in too much on the interest rate right because if you're already in your house you got in at a good price you got in with some um closing costs and you let's say you went in at six and a half percent but a year from now the interest rates go down to five and a half percent you could just refinance okay so that's just kind of i'm getting ahead of myself that's just you know i just want to i love to educate you guys and again if you found this super informative if it helped you if it gave you just kind of like oh okay that makes sense please like comment subscribe share share it to the world we would love to help everyone and everyone that we can your friends your family your neighbors your co-workers evolve in real estate here in florida and take some time and look at all my other videos. Uh, like I said, I cover all of Ocala, Central Florida, so I have a bunch of different videos touring different houses in different areas, okay? Well, stay tuned to my next video.